Hi, I'm Patty Paul. You're watching the Living Wisdom Show, and today I'm going to be talking about freedom and responsibility. This is such an important, important uh, subject for everybody on a personal level and also on a global level to understand what freedom and responsibility mean um, on the world impact. What we see going on in the Middle East, specifically in Iraq now, and by the way, this show, show is being taped um, a couple of months after the quote-unquote war in Iraq has, was declared over. Uh, American soldiers are still dying. The Iraqi citizens are still raging against uh, Americans and many others. What's going on in Iraq right now is evidence of those who have freedom without responsibility. Now, to understand this, we need to understand both of those words and the meaning behind them. Freedom means personal freedom that doesn't negatively impact others. Freedom that's in our highest good with harm to others might be another way of saying it. And responsibility, responsibility meaning being responsible for ourselves, taking responsibility for our own lives, uh, ending the blame of others because when you blame other people from you, for your circumstances you are disempowering yourself what you're saying without saying the words is my life can't get better until you change so I'm talking about personal responsibility and the more we take of personal responsibility, whether as individuals or as collective groups of people, the more freedom we'll have, the more personal freedom. They go hand in hand. What happened when the powers that be in this country, whether you see that as the president and or um, Congress and or the military, when they decided to liberate, quote unquote, the Iraqi people, they took responsibility away from those people and in a way stepped in where they, we really didn't belong. What happened um, had perhaps the highest uh, motivation, um, the best intent, but the results of how effective that action was show that we actually went where we didn't belo belong at that time. Back in 1989, there was almost a spontaneous chain reaction of people in the Soviet bloc, members of the USSR, different factions, choosing for themselves to have more freedom, choosing for themselves to be independent and this spontaneous chain reaction resulted in the dissolution of the USSR, the, the fall of the Berlin Wall. America didn't cause that, even though President Reagan at the time, or later I should say, kind of wanted to take credit for the fall of the, the uh, Soviet bloc by mentioning his Star Wars uh, program, which never was effective. Now, 
the only people responsible for bringing about that enormous change, that enormous move toward freedom and democracy were the people, the, the countrymen involved. And perhaps this was more on an unconscious level where this spontaneous choice to, came, came about. Likewise, in the Middle East and other areas of the world, true freedom will be brought on by those peoples who live in those countries. Um, in this world, each of us is our, at our own stage of growth and development. It doesn't mean that some people are better than others, that some people, because they are more advanced, more enlightened, however you want to describe it, are better than anybody else. No, it's not that at all. It's just that we are each in our own um, stage of, of development. And it's up to us to grow individually. And in a country, so to speak, where there's a collective of peoples, those individuals who reach that level of wanting to take responsibility for themselves, wanting to or being willing to stop blaming everybody else for their plight, including their government, when they get to that level of responsibility, they seek their own freedom. So many, I mean, focusing still on the Middle East and Iraq and Iran and those countries, so many who had reached that level of responsibility and that desire for freedom on an individual basis found a way to have that for themselves. And many of them emigrated to other countries because they knew it wasn't possible in their home country to have that level of freedom at that present time, at that time, rather. Um, but there does come a time, just as in 1989, when on an unconscious level almost, a collective of people come to the same choice or decision to have more freedom. That can also happen in the Middle East. And the Middle East also includes the country of Israel because the fighting, the violence, the pain and the suffering, and the blame goes on and on in the state of Israel as in with its, as goes on in its neighboring countries. Getting back to this American, whether you call it an invasion or a liberation, it was about America in that way taking on responsibility that it had no business taking on. Um, it was so sad to see people's and it always is sad to see anyone suffering at the hands of another. So easy to see that on the one hand you have a bully, whether that be a dictator or a king or a president. And on the, the other hand, you have those who suffer at the hands of the bully, the victim or victims in other words. But oddly enough, it's not about conquering the bully. It's about the victims standing up and ending their own victimhood, simply, once again, by taking back responsibility. This is a very sensitive area because so many people identify themselves as victims victims of prejudice, victims of uh, poverty, victims of a tyrannical government. 
and because the circumstance of their life evidences that victimhood, they might say, CCC, I am truly a victim because we do have this oppressive, whether it's prejudice or tyrannical leader. The higher truth of that, the mm, more, the bigger picture, so to speak, the more metaphysical perspective is that we do each create our own reality. We, cr we create our own reality out of our beliefs and attitudes, our thoughts and feelings, our choices and deci decisions, those could be called the raw materials of our own personal reality creation. And in addition to those raw materials, we have tools, tools that are namely desire, expectation, and willingness. So putting the raw materials together and, and working with our tools, imagination, desire, and expectation, we can change the reality that we've created and make it one we desire to have, more in line with our personal growth, our personal desire for freedom. Each of us has a soul, and it is the inherent goal of the soul, one of them, to find freedom, freedom in the highest sense. Getting back to the raw materials, beliefs and attitudes, this is where a belief that one is a victim comes in, because if you really hold that belief, then you are creating your reality out of that belief. If a collective of people who are, shall we say, have a racial heritage or a, uh, some sort of connection in that way, if they see themselves collectively as victims, victims of persecution, they create that and they have created that in lifetime after lifetime. In psychology that's taught in schools, there's a perspective that says your experience creates who you are. And so many hold that as the truth, meaning, well, I wouldn't be a victim if this hadn't happened to me. The higher truth, once again, is it wouldn't have happened to you if you had not believed it would happen. It's a very complex reality creation and one that I suggest you explore on your own. I wrote a book called A New Spirituality Beyond Religion. I talk in detail about how we do each create our own reality, not just our personal reality, not just our personal life, but a global reality too. My book is available in libraries and stores. And there are other books and other uh, sources of information on how this reality creation takes place. But the key again to finding personal freedom is to first take responsibility for creating your reality. What happens out in the world on the global stage is a reflection of, if not our current beliefs and attitudes that each of us might hold, but is a reflection of beliefs and attitudes, thoughts and feelings, experiences that are stored in what is our unconscious mind from other lifetimes. So when we see tyrants, 
brutal tyrants um, doing subhuman things to other people. It's a reminder or a reflection of what we've experienced also in past lifetimes and perhaps we ourselves engaged in this subhuman behavior against others. Perhaps we might have had a lifetime or several where we were the dominating force, the tyrant. Certainly lifetimes of being victims. So the influence from past lifetimes we feel in our current life frequently, but we also see kind of a reflection of it on the world stage. And it helps sometimes to step back, um, to kind of disengage from the misery that we see happening in the world, and to remember that we can change it by changing ourselves. This is a higher level of responsibility than most people are willing to take. I've done a lot of uh, public speaking and I've done book signings and met a lot of people in the metaphysical community. And when we get on the subject of reality creation and I perhaps mention that, oh yeah, my belief system is based on each one of us creates our own reality. Often the person I'm talking to says, oh yeah, I totally agree with that. And then as the conversation progresses, they start complaining about the school system that their kid is uh, in, or the president, or Democrats, or women, or men. You know, we have our own favorite targets of who we're going to blame. Good old mom and pop. <laughs> they get blamed all the time. Um, and that's what keeps psychologists and psychiatrists in business. There is a way of healing the past. There is a way of healing the inner child and the wounded adolescent so that we can let go of that baggage and be free of it. That helps to make us a freer adult when we do that. Our relationships with men or women or, or um, even our, in our spiritual endeavor, whether it involves organized religion or not, Often there's a lot of healing to be done there in order to be freer and happier. Speaking of organized religion, organized religion has served such a valuable service for us. It has provided a way of us, uh, way for us to get in touch with our spirituality. It has reminded us that we do have a spiritual nature in lifetime after lifetime. But organized religions are basically belief systems, and every single belief system has its limitations. And so it's wise to appreciate what organized religion has done for us or perhaps is currently doing. But to also open to a higher truth that there is also always a more empowering belief system, a more freeing belief system. A friend of mine, Lazarus, put it this way. It's important for each one of us to stand firmly on the convictions of our beliefs and then to raise up on our tiptoes reaching for a higher truth. I thought that was a wonderful way of expressing it. So on our path, our path of being a human being, finding out what that's about, learning how to become more successful, 
in all the ways that success can be to be happier to, to have more fun to also embark on a spiritual path that can be fulfilling but also enlightening that can open us up to higher truths that actually is a very empowering a very freeing adventure in science for the last few years the issue of cloning has been a big one and most people are offended by the idea of cloning even if they don't really know why it's this is something inherently offensive or innately offensive about that concept but if you think about it some of the solid belief systems in our society beliefs about what it is to be a man what it is to be a woman organized religion those sets of belief systems what they try to do or the goal often is to clone to have people cloned into being replicas of whatever that system says is is um, the approved way of being organized religion often wants everybody to subscribe to the same beliefs to do the same things to have the same fears and to pray the same way to be obedient so in a way that's an attempt to clone us important to look at that think about that and see for yourself um, if that works for you anymore or if perhaps you'd like to be free of that as well so there's many ways of finding personal freedom thinking about it feeling about it that's the start making conscious choices about it and decisions um, seeing the possibilities of what it would be to have a life with less obligations and more preferences I have a friend who, a very nice man, who can hardly say no to anybody. So consequently, he's the um, like almost like the original Mr. Nice Guy, and he he um, always says yes, and people love him for that. But the thing is in reality he sees himself getting stuck having to do things that he really doesn't want to do so often we have a distorted view of what responsibility is men I think especially have this view that to be a responsible person means you have to take care of other people and that creates a heavy burden Um, again in this area to really examine for yourself what things you find yourself doing that are obligations that you would prefer not to do and then to find a way to let go of those now naturally some of it we have to pay our rent we have to get money somehow to survive so there are basic obligations that we have to ourselves and those we love to survive to get by but there's a lot of other things that we think we're obligated to do usually on the social level that I think if you, if you examine for yourself look at that carefully for yourself you can see that there might be changes you can make uh, moving more for doing what you prefer doing and letting go of the things you don't really want to do like saying yes to everybody and trying to make everybody else happy 
other people's happiness is not our responsibility. Married couples get into big trouble sometimes because they each have an expect expectation that the other is supposed to make them happy, that that's the responsibility. That isn't true at all. So again, I suggest in your own way, in your own time, to look at how you can find more freedom, how you can take more responsibility in your own life. I want to thank you for paying attention during this time. Again, the name of the show is Living Wisdom, and I'm Patty Paul. I look forward to spending time with you again, whenever that might be.